Hello, and welcome to What's Bubbling at Zimbabwe. I'm inventor Dan Zen, and in this bubbling, we're pleased to present Zimhep. That's Zim7. All right, so I'm going to take you through some of the updates with Zim7. It's a soft launch right now. We're also planning on providing Zim snips to go along with Zim7. Zim snips is a way that we can make code snips for components and controls and frame. Uh, but that's still coming. In the meantime, though, Zim7 is here, and I'd like to take you through the updates. Let's go to the site now at zimjs.com. And we'll press on the docs. To find the updates, we would click the updates link here. But you can see a couple right away here. And that is uh, the Zim helper modules, which were really tightened up in Zim 6. That was part of it, six helper modules. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, but the documentation was not quite consistent there, so we've made that consistent. First of all, we've brought all these up to version ones. So if we go into each one, sorry for that bright flash, then we can see that there's a description for each one. There's also a, a link for examples, and then right into the docs here, methods. And so the docs are very similar to the docs back in back here, these docs, but they're inside, and here's game, and so again, the description, the examples, and right into the docs here. So those are have all been made consistent, and they've all been brought up into version one. So cool. In the docs, we've also uh, all, almost pretty well, all entries now have a video reference as well as the other references. For instance, if we open a button and scroll down, Woo. Uh, we can view the code. We always had the bits, so the bits would take us, but uh, the Zim bits were made, probably finished a couple years ago, maybe a year ago, and we've introduced things since the bits, and so there wasn't really anywhere to see examples or help um, beyond the docs at that point. So what we've done is we've gone through all of the doc entries and found the vids that relate to the doc videos. So these are YouTube videos, the Zim Capture series, the Bubbling series, and, and that's a neat thing because some of these things are here now, they're new, and um, so now we can present uh, the the bubbling series or the explore section or the what is whatever uh, is needed are there in the vids so that's excellent news and, and for instance this portal it, it didn't have any zim bits but now there's a vid on on the portal we've got a couple cool things here in the uh, the methods so top and bot you can easily get their little chainable methods to easily get it uh, put something, a circle or whatever, up to the top of its container or to the bottom of its container. And then a neat keyboard right here. So I'll take you through a bubbling for the keyboard specifically. Right now we're just introducing the ge in general what's going on with Sim 7. But uh, the keyboard's a uh, pretty cool component, so we'll take you through that. All right, let's go into the updates and take a peek at what else we might see there. So I'm clicking the updates now. Here's Zim 7. So these are the new things with Zim. And the keyboard is mentioned. The top, the bot. We added a uh, link to libraries, right? The video links. Updated a wheel event. Added a node list to Zim loop so that you can use Zim Z. And that, that, collects, uh, that collects HTML tags based on the... the query, uh, much like the dollar sign underscore does in in jQuery. But uh, so that's Zim Z, and then we can now loop through that set as well, and each time get uh, the HTML tag itself. We dedicated the portal to Stephen Hawkins. Oh, that's too bad. Hawkins. And um, let's see, at SVG to bitmap. Uh, that's cool. So we can use bitmaps, right? Uh, well, we can use SVGs and convert them into bitmaps and use them directly uh, in Zim. And we have better base 64 bitmap support as well. We found that those can be made with a bitmap, but they do, they're not available right away. So now we update the stage 50 milliseconds after, and that seems to work out all right. And we've officially launched the Zim uh, typings 
um, things like that. The keyboard focus as well was brought back, which is good. We had that for a while. It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't kind of full. And then when we introduced the, when we introduced the um, accessibility, we put accessibility has full tab and all all the system to control where arrows go and stuff. But we took took it out of the of non well of Zim when it's not running accessibility. You don't always need to run. Uh, accessibility. So we brought that back and what this just means is uh, if you click on a stepper then when you use the arrow that stepper will get the arrow or a slider or a dial. So uh, it sort of works a little bit in behind the scene but you can do some settings there as well. We were going to change pose to automatically add to the stage much like center and center reg does and add to obviously. Um, but we did it. We ran it for a little bit <laughs> and we ran the, uh, we were making a game and the leaderboard was there and all of a sudden we were getting this button showing up when the leaderboard wasn't, it wasn't uh, even ready to be typed in. And we're going, where the heck did that come from? And I searched and I searched and searched and realized it was because we had positioned the button, but we didn't want to add it. And because we didn't put a container here, it automatically added to the stage, but that's not where we were adding it. And so it was like, oh, okay, I think that we'd run into more problems maybe than it's worth. So you still need to specify if you want to position and add it to a container, you need to specify that third parameter. Uh, so anyway, but we did add an index to it. So that was missing. So this, this brings pose basically in line with uh, center and center reg and add to uh, being able to also specify an index as to where to add it. Gesture, we've added a couple things. Uh, the on top parameter. Where do I see these things? The on top parameter and a surround parameter. So those are two parameters. Uh, for some reason I can't read it in amongst here. But uh, that's, oh, we did do something with gesture with the rectangle that was a little different. Oh yes, this um, for the surround to work, we realized that the gesture rectangle wasn't quite cutting it because gesture often scales things and rotates things. If you just have one, one um, rect that defines the bounds or the, uh, the boundaries, uh, it's not going to work out. Your, your, your stuff that you're gesturing or that you're manipulating will constantly be going outside the bounds. So we've now fix that for you. You could, you could uh, dynamically change the bounds. And as a matter of fact, it was tricky and that's what we did. And so we rolled that right into gesture. So in other words, the bounds, um, what do we call that thing? Let me just see. It's like it breaks. This is improvement. Adjustment gesture rect parameter. It's the rect parameter. I don't like to use bounds because bounds, set bounds and get bounds is something specific, but this is the boundaries, we'll call it, wh where you can drag the thing. So you say you can't drag it outside this, the, the stage dimensions. Um, so what we have now is if we increase the size of it, it keeps the object inside those bounds still. And even if you rotate it, and that starts getting pretty tricky when you rotate something to keep it within bounds. Uh, so we did that for you in Zim Gesture. And that, that means it's a little bit different than just your regular drag bounds. The regular drag bounds is based, it, it keeps the registration point within the bounds. But the gesture uh, rect that we're using here actually keeps the whole object within and that's because drag, you're, you tend not to be changing the scale of something as you're dragging it, but with gesture you do. So that was tricky, and we did that. And outside as well, outside is the parameter that, that drag has as well, uh, but we've added it to gesture where you can have something stay outside the bounds and, and still pinch and drag that around. Now, that was just too much to deal with with rotation. So we, uh, we make it so that it doesn't work if, if, it, if rotation is turned on. So outside will not work if rotation is turned on. But if you turn the rotation off, then you can pinch and drag something and keep it outside the bounds, which could be handy. Uh, there's a bunch of general fixes as well. A dozen general fixes on things, little uh, little fixes. Okay, so that is what we've been doing with Zim 7, Zim HEP. And if you want, just a, why don't we just give you a sneak peek at SNPs, a snip peek 
snips, zim snips right here. So what this is, is you can choose which type of component you want, and then you can make changes to it. So here we are dragging to, to change the scale of it, or we could change the color of it. And then what happens is you get the code down here that would make that button. Uh, or this label and indeed there's a bunch of controls which we haven't inputted yet uh, there's frame which we're working on which gets different types and animations as well we're going to to use but for now uh, we're, we're not there yet that's that's the deal for zim snips we've got most of the components in there and roughly working and uh, the controls are actually in there as well and roughly working. We just haven't uploaded it to the site here, but locally uh, we're working on that. We're coming along. I can see it being about another month. I don't know. It's sort of uh, a bit onerous to, to, to do. But that is also part of the Zim 7 launch, uh, as well as potentially a node package manager. So we were trying to prepare Zim 7 to be available for node package manager. We do have a working version of that. It's just we have to then provide a, a package for CreateJS as well. We're sort of thinking about waiting for CreateJS to get in there as well, but um, I don't think so. I think probably what I do is I need to look at that package again uh, for CreateJS and sort of just host it ourselves somewhere. And so it's the, the hosting of all that that we're getting into right now. And that is the updates for Zim 7. Stay tuned for a bubbling on the keyboard specifically, which was made by our friend Frank in the Netherlands there. So thanks Frank for that code. And make sure you check the, the bubbling out for the keyboard and we'll go through how to use that. Woohoo! I am inventor Dan Zen and that is what's bubbling here at Zim. Ciao!